The next concept is slope. You already saw slope in the relations and functions unit. Slope is another word for rate of change. And we had that formula that is rise over run. Okay? If you were skiing from B to A, it would be scarier than skiing from D to C because B to A is steeper. So when something is steeper, it has a bigger slope. So we've seen this formula already. We've talked about it as the slope being rise over the run. And if we think about what's happening when we have two points, if I have one point here and one point here, this is my x1, y1 point, and this is my x2, y2 point. Then my rise is just y2 minus y1. I'm going to put numbers right beside here so that you can see. Let's pretend this point is at 7 comma 5, and let's pretend that this point is at 3 comma 2. If we went from 3 comma 2 to 7 comma 5, could you see that this difference that height would be 3 because you're going from 2 up to 5. This formula says if you take 5 and minus 2, you should get the right answer. Yes. And your run is x2 minus x1. If I went from 3 to 7, this number should be 4. Does that make sense? If I take x2, which is 7, and I minus x1, which is 3, do I get 4? Yes. So the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 is just finding that vertical distance and that horizontal distance. So find the slopes of the following lines. You could either use the formula or you could just count it from the graph. Often if you have a graph, it's easy to count. If I go from one point to the other, what's my run? Three. What's my rise? Four. My slope? rise over run is 4 over 3. If you wanted to use the formula, you have to pick one of them as your first point. Again, it doesn't matter which you pick as your first or second point. The math will work out the same. So if I choose this as x1 and y1, and this is x2 and y2, and I use my slope formula, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. 4 minus 0 is 4. 0 minus a negative 3 is positive 3. Our second example. This distance is 2. This distance is 3, but we're going down 3, so we write it as a negative 3. When you're going from one point to another, you have to decide which direction you're going in. So when I go to the right, that's why I labeled this as positive 2, because I went 2 in the positive direction, and then I went down 3. So our slope in this case, rise over run, is negative 3 over 2. 
Now, whichever point you decide to start on, say someone said, well, what happens, Mr. JR, you went from negative 2, 0 to 0, negative 3. Because that's what most people do. They go from left to right. That's sort of how you've read books all your lives. You start here. I went 2 to the right and then 3 down. So that's how I got my numbers to be positive and negative. But not all people read from left to right. Some languages read from right to left. Does that mean they can't do math? No. If I started from this point and I went in this direction first, I'd go negative 2 and then I would go up 3. So my slope then would be rise of 3, run of negative 2. Are those fractions the same? Yes. So it doesn't matter which you choose as your first point and second point, as long as you travel from one point to the other point and make note of which direction you're going. Now, one of the things that you're going to just know from this point forward is any slope, like our first example, that goes up from left to right. Can you see that this slope is rising from left to right? That will always be a positive slope. And any slope that is going down from left to right, it's going to be a negative slope. So this one, my line is going down as I go from left to right. That will always be a negative slope. If you're unsure, well, then you can go to your formula. I'm going to make this one x1 and y1, this one x2 and y2. My slope formula says y2, negative 3 minus y1, 0, over x2, 0, minus x1, negative 2. Negative 3 minus 0 is negative 3. 0 minus a negative 2 is positive 2. So it comes out to negative 3 over 2, whichever way you go about it. Finally, our last one here with points. Again, I would go over 5, there it is, up 4, my slope, rise over run, will be 4 fifths. I know my slope should be positive because it's going up from left to right. I could have used my formula as well, but if you have a graph, often it's easiest just to count it. If the points are really far apart, you might choose to use your formula. So you'll have a choice in that. How do we find the slope when we know two points? Well, you could draw the graph, but usually drawing a graph when you don't have a graph seems like a lot of extra work. In this case, I would probably use my formula. Well, I would use my formula. I would say this is my x1 and my y1, this is my x2 and my y2. My slope formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So simplifying that, negative 4 minus 2, negative 6, 5 minus a negative 3, 5 plus 3 will be 8. This simplifies to negative 3 over 4. So part B, I would like you to find that slope and show me once you're done. Awesome. Few mental math errors here and there, but generally everybody was able to get one half. Now we're going to look at some special lines. A horizontal line. If I go between those two points, can you see that you have a run of seven? What's your rise? Zero. So your slope will be zero over seven. Simplify that fraction. Zero. You have zero cupcakes to share with your friends. 
on your birthday and you have seven friends come over, how many cupcakes do they each get? Zero. That is not a good birthday party. A vertical line. Well, now I have a rise of seven and a run of zero. So when I go to write my slope, my rise is seven, my run is zero. What is this equal to? This is not possible. Go to type this into your calculator, your calculator gets angry. Angry calculators. It tells you error. This, so we would write that this is undefined. It's not possible. So to summarize what we've seen so far, if we have a positive slope, the line climbs to the right. So we can just draw a picture. That would have a positive slope. If we have a negative slope, then it goes down from left to right. That line has a negative slope. If the slope is zero, it's horizontal. If the slope is undefined, it goes straight up and down. As the steepness increases, so as the incline of the line climbs, just looking at the numbers, so this is the absolute value which says just looking at the numbers, it increases. So if I do an example for you that is a positive example, this line here has a slope of 1, whereas this line has a slope of 3. So as it gets steeper, the value of the slope increases. And the reason we have this stated as the absolute value because if I look at negative 1, technically negative 3 is a smaller number than negative 1, but we would just say that, oh, this is negative 1, sorry. We would say that just looking at the numbers, the absolute value says change everything to positive. Well, 3 is bigger than 1. And so we have a steeper negative slope when we have negative 3 compared to negative 1.